car crashes, defective products, dangerous drugs, injuries, and abuse. Across the state of Alabama, the attorneys, proudly sponsored by the law firm of Hollis Wright, are here to serve you. Your tough legal questions answered by our experts with host David Lamb and the attorneys of Hollis Wright. Good evening and welcome into the attorneys. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Got a really interesting topic of conversation, panel of experts. We have everything and now we have you. And for that, we are very grateful. A couple of reminders before we jump into tonight's topic of conversation uh, for you to be involved with it, which we'd love for you to do. Call, text, email that information at the bottom of your screen. And a really cool thing that Josh, the folks at Hollis Wright make available each and every Sunday night is attorneys from Hollis Wright standing by live to speak with you. That is a free off air and confidential conversation and it's an opportunity that is yours for the taking all throughout the program tonight and leading our conversation Josh Wright he's managing partner of Hollis Wright good to see you sir you doing okay doing great doing great um, you know super happy tonight to have Tom Sinclair on actually he could be a host of this show because he's done this show enough times on different topics and that's what I love about him is sometimes he'll roll in with one topic and then we come in with a new topic and it adds new information Tom, and, and, and good stuff Tom is definitely an FOA. He's a friend of the attorneys. He's been on that. so many times. He's <laughs> an FOA for sure. Well, he's also a personal friend of mine, which I love. Yeah, and um, hey, look, so uh, we're going to be on today to talk uh, about kind of a, a new topic. And we've only done this a couple times over the last 11 years. And we're talking really about collateral claims, meaning when you come to a law firm like Tom's firm or our firm, and we're managing, for example, an auto accident or a trucking accident or an industrial accident. Sometimes there are collateral claims that need to be investigated to make sure that there is a, uh, a kind of a whole uh, evaluation of uh, those things that uh, could be applicable to a person's injury and life and accidental death uh, uh, benefits. Uh, are those types of things and and so kind of it's a collateral show if you okay. will uh, but Tom's an expert in this area too not just in the underlying litigation but kind of how to manage these and how to investigate these things so you know I'm glad you're on to be able to talk about this with us well thank you I'm, I'm always glad to be on here uh, mostly because it's such a wonderful introduction I just come here for the introduction <laughs> to be honest with you um, the, the fact is that what you have when you come to an attorney is a crisis, okay? And when you come in a crisis, you need somebody who thinks with a clarity of mind to look beyond simply what is at the forefront of your mind. If you come in and you've been injured at your workplace or you have someone that you love has been lost in a car accident, you're going to need somebody who can go through that crisis with you hand in hand and investigate all of these secondary and collateral claims. The, the best example I can think of is the recent circumstances we saw, tragically somebody had died and a wife had come in needing to prosecute what is something you handle all the time, the wrongful death claim here in Alabama, right? The wife was unaware of the fact that the employer had provided a life insurance policy and that it was paid for by the employer so she didn't see that deduction coming out of his paycheck. They were unaware of it, and, and because your firm picked up the phone and involved attorneys in your own firm to investigate, you dug up a very substantial policy yeah. that helped get that family through. It's not just the prosecution of that primary claim that brings you to the attorney. It's that clarity of mind, somebody who can give you peace again and let you get through what you're getting through. Yeah. That's why you guys are so great with this show. You reach out to people and you tell them, workplace injuries, wrongful death, trucking accident litigation, the types of cases that y'all handle, you see those collateral claims all the time. And that's what's really important. Life insurance is the original safety net. Yeah. It's what people provided so that their families could get through that crisis. AD&D insurance is usually found within a life insurance policy. It's an accidental death and dismemberment policy. So you see these come up. When somebody has a life insurance policy for $100,000, in the terms of that policy, there will be a doubling of that. Yeah. They'll get another 100000 on top of that so that they will get through that crisis. Your firm does a great job of investigating those claims. Well, it really does. Th thank you for saying that. And and I just come on the show to have Tom talk good about <laughs> us. So I no, like the I, way but, this but, works. but you know, I, I think he raises kind of an important question, David, that I know that will make sense to you too. And that is that, 
you know, it's one thing to go to a lawyer because you have a crisis or an issue that's come up, but you do need someone that's going to fully and completely evaluate mm -hmm. comprehensively any potential claims that you may have. And uh, this type of life and AD&D uh, policy actually comes up a lot more than you think. And so it is part of the clarity, as Tom mentions it, that you've got to have in order to fully and completely investigate. It's another reason why a lot of times clients will look at me in, in our kind of initial meetings, why are you asking all these questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm asking these questions to make sure, and I give examples like this of, hey, what else is out there that we can make sure that we protect you mm -hmm. and compensate your family to the extent that there's something else out there? We're going to make sure we attack it. You know, th this is, and this comes up quite often in, in our show, and, and that is that you guys are experts in this arena. You deal with this all the time. You know, the lay public, you know, the loss of a loved one is something, you know, fortunately, you know, once a lifetime happens. So, so you're in shock, you're depressed and all of that, and, and you don't know what you don't know, and you don't know what questions you should be asking. You barely know the answers, and, and, and so I think this is another example of how having someone like, like you all who operate in this realm, you know exactly uh, what rocks to be looking under and what questions to be asking. That's, that's crucial, and I, I can use another Hollis Wright case that they picked up the phone and called us on that because employee benefits are unique, they're governed by a special law called ERISA under the federal law. Um, Josh will call me when he's got one of those types of claims. And one of these cases involved a workplace injury, okay? Now, we've all seen the workers' comp carriers come in and try to lowball a settlement real quick before they get a lawyer. Don't, don't do that. Pick up the phone and call a lawyer because what happened in that case was that there was a complete use of your client's arm. Josh and his firm was able to come in and substantially help those people with those types of injuries, especially if there's some defect in a product that was involved, failure to include a safety guard, which I believe that case was. And then because Josh and his crew asked so many questions, what they did was they discovered that there might be an ERISA claim. We got involved, investigated that on your behalf, and lo and behold, there was an AD&D policy that provided an additional benefit on top of what Josh was doing and the Hollis Wright crew were doing because he had lost the use of his arm. Don't try to do this alone, okay? I cannot stress that enough. You need, in the middle of that crisis, somebody that is only on your team. And if you pick up the phone and call these people at Hollis Wright, they're on your team. They're not working for the insurance company or anybody else. You need that. To your point, it is absolutely crucial in the middle of a crisis to have somebody that is your fiduciary, somebody that serves your interests. Uh, I know we're getting ready to go to break. When we come back, I want to unwrap this just a little bit and talk in terms of when the life and AD&D uh, issues come up, what formats they're in. Tom's already mentioned a little bit about sometimes it may be an employee benefit. Sometimes someone may have an individual policy. I want to unwrap that a little bit so people know where to go look and know that they have options if they want to go get this type of coverage on their own. That's a good point to uh, step aside for just a moment or two as we head to break. A reminder, Hollis Wright, they are wherever you are on social media, uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. They are there. Just uh, search the term Hollis Wright and you'll find them on social media. Stay tuned. We're coming back. More of the attorneys coming right up. I'm Josh Wright with the law firm of Hollis Wright, a personal injury law firm. And thank you for watching the attorneys. We hope you, a friend, or a loved one never needs legal counsel for a case. But if you do, the goal of the show is simple, to provide answers and legal counsel when you need it the most. Your call to the show is free and off air. So if you have questions specific to the show or related to other accident or injury topics, call, email, or text us. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, or go to hollis-right.com and click on the Contact Us button. We know your time is valuable, so thank you for spending it with us and watching The Attorneys. The Attorneys, proudly sponsored by the law firm of Hollis Wright, are here to serve you. When we started the show eight years ago, my hope was 
we would be able to do what we do best, which is to help people answer real-world legal-related issues they have in their life. People oftentimes are confronting various legal issues and problems in their lives that range across the gamut of legal practice areas. Bankruptcy, criminal law, family law, just to name a few. And to be able to have a 30-minute platform or format to where we can just cover various legal topics once a week uh, that's obviously the primary focus of the show. That we would be able to use the resources of the many lawyers we have at this law firm to create a plan that had a lasting impact that also gave back to the community at the same time. And I think we've done just that with the attorneys. Welcome back. Uh, appreciate you being with us. A reminder, attorneys from Hollis Wright are standing by live all throughout the show. So take advantage of that uh, conversation. That opportunity is yours for the taking all throughout the program tonight. Josh. And, you know, we've also got experts. If someone's going through uh, one of these policy disputes, for example, or there's been a denial of coverage, we've got lawyers tonight that can answer those questions and try and lead, guide, and direct people in the right direction. Um, all right, Tom, let's talk just for a second about this. W when do you see these policies procured? When, when are, are they obtained in the context of employment? Uh, an individual has their own personal policy when they're purchasing life insurance? When do you see this stuff? Yeah, that's a great question. What I often see is that people don't know exactly what coverage they've got. So um, according to research, about half of Alabamians get their insurance through their workplace. So if you're at a large employer, even a small or medium-sized employer, they will have group insurance policies, and you will be considered a participant in that. Now, that's where a lot of the insurance comes up. Now, you also may have a life insurance policy that you bought many years ago, or your spouse or loved one bought, and that may have both the life insurance component and an AD&D, or accidental death and dismemberment component. And if it's half and half, half between private policies and employer, you're going to be straddling the fence on state law, bad faith insurance claim kind of disputes and what we call ERISA disputes, which is the Employee Retirement Income Security Act of 1974. And I'm not going to put you to sleep talking at length about that. Let's just say it's a federal law that supersedes, preempts the state laws. So what you can get from that claim is much different and how you prosecute it though there's a lot of similarities here. That's why it's so important to do what Josh said. You need to pick up that phone because I see all too often people coming into my office with these claims and they waited until that last denial. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. Don't wait until the last minute. You got to pick up the phone and call. You've been in a car accident. You've been in a truck accident. You've got employment related benefits. You've got to investigate those claims now. And it's important, especially when you get to bad faith and ERISA claims, that you work up the claim file before you go to a lawyer. You need a lawyer to work that claim file. You don't go to trial alone is the way I put it, right? No, that's exactly right. So when you see a bad faith claim come in and you see that it's not quite there yet, you can do what you need to to prove to a jury or to a federal judge, hey, these guys didn't do what they needed yep. to do. And it was obvious from the get-go. Yeah, you know, one of the ways we often pick up on this, Tom's exactly right, about half of these policies are purchased, you know, whether they're direct life or AD&D policies or disability policies, which we're not necessarily talking about today, they're picked up uh, through employment. So a lot of times what we do is we get a pay stub, we evaluate what deductions are being taken out on a monthly basis or a, a bi-weekly basis to make sure that we have an idea and then we investigate that to determine, hey, this person actually has a disability policy, for example, that could be applicable in this circumstance. But I think, you know, Tom's very right that they come in a lot of context and when they do and you make a claim, a lot of times they will be denied. And that's when you do need to get a lawyer involved to make sure the lawyer helps lead, guide, and direct you through that process to make sure, is it a valid denial? Is it a non-valid denial? Do we need to litigate? And that's one of the things I want to talk to you about is you see denials in this world a lot. A lot. And sometimes that's the default. It's a denial of a claim. We see that with regular car insurance. It's a default denial until we get involved and we start pushing around 
um, what happened in the accident, all of a sudden the denial becomes a covered claim. So when you see denials, what is your process that you use in these circumstances to make sure the insurance company understands that something may in fact be a covered claim? Yeah, that's a great question. The, the, the truth is what you're pointing out is that people often don't follow their instincts in this regard. I mean, listen, if you've got a, a car crash where the, the insurance company for the other guy who hit you or the trucking company that basically ran over your car with you know tens of thousands of pounds you you think they're going to do the right thing but at the back of your mind you're thinking probably something's not quite right you need to follow your instinct pick up the phone right then and there and here's why to your question if you come to my office and you have a bad faith insurance claim in, that is building you've gotten your denial in hand and they say okay you can appeal it right we've seen this you can Prove we're wrong if you want. That's the moment you have where you need to prepare your case for trial. If you try to appeal that claim under ERISA, under your employee benefits, you could run into a whole host of problems because there's limits on discovery, there's no jury trial, there's a host of problems under ERISA for employee benefits. Don't appeal alone. If you have a trucking accident, or a product liability case that's come into your office and you see that the insurance company is not willing to help you settle this, you start working up that claim file from the moment they come to you. Because under bad faith law, you need to take away what they will try to use as a shield. They'll try to use that claim file as a shield and say, this isn't bad faith. The most we should have to pay is what we should have paid to begin with. You strip away that shield by working up that claim file and that makes all the difference in the world. So. It's, it's crucial that you actually take an opportunity, which is why I love you guys so much, to pick up the phone and call, because that phone call could be the beginning of a whole cascade of potential claims, of potential work that needs to be done to make sure your safety net, your compensation, everything that has happened to you, you have been made whole at the end of the day, right? You know, there's a, there's a, fundamental premise that we follow which is there's a significant difference when you come to our firm between in a wreck get a check which is a general concept and mm -hmm. comprehensively evaluate someone's injury uh, to try and see if you can compensate them and there are a lot of times by the way Tom and I see this all the time where someone comes to us and we say hey look there's nothing we can do yeah. um, unfortunately here are the the circumstances of your claim you don't have a valid claim and here are the reasons why that happens plenty so you know, there's a fundamental difference between the two. Um, when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about bad faith uh, because it's something that Tom has an expertise in too and how you can set these denial of certain policies up in order to uh, increase the value of the claims from a bad faith perspective. Before we go to break, do either of you charge for an initial consultation? No. 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 If I can't improve someone's circumstance, I'm not going to charge them a fee for that. Yeah. Yeah. And we're the same way. And of course, you know, we handle everything on contingency, so we wouldn't be charging up front anyways. If we're successful, then, you know, we're going to have a contingency fee, a reasonable contingency fee that the client has access to their contract. They know what's going on. They know what their percentages are. They know how that works. And they know how the expenses are going to be deducted in those claims. And they also know that we're not here to increase expenses because ultimately that's just a dollar spent and a dollar received. So our goal is to be as efficient as we can in litigating their case. But the client knows at all times kind of how that structure worked and that's why we say get to a lawyer to get the same quality of legal service as right. what's happening on the other side of your claim because you can do that at no cost to your own. Yeah. So, so a call that will cost you nothing but could make all the difference in the world. Alright, we're stepping aside. Our final break of the evening. Uh, stay tuned. More of the attorneys coming right up. I'm attorney Carter Clay with Hollis Wright Law Firm. If you've ever been involved in a civil lawsuit or been a witness to an accident, then you may have been asked to give deposition testimony. In this week's Legal 411, we are answering the question, what is a deposition and why am I being asked to give one? Depositions involve the process of a person giving under oath testimony that is outside of court. The person giving deposition testimony is referred to as the deponent. 
Depositions are taken in the presence of a court reporter and the court reporter records the testimony. After the deposition, the attorneys for the parties received a typed transcript that contains all the questions that were asked by the attorneys as well as the answers given by the deponent. The purpose of taking depositions is to ensure that the attorneys for the parties have a full and complete understanding of the events giving rise to the lawsuit as well as an understanding of the testimony that they can expect to hear from witnesses at trial. Another reason an attorney might want to get deposition testimony is that it allows the attorneys to better prepare for trial and to develop a strategy for presenting the case to a judge or a jury. At trial, the deposition testimony can be used in several ways. First, if a witness on the stand deviates from the deposition testimony, an attorney can use the deposition to impeach the witness. Also, if a witness forgets certain facts or events, the deposition can be used to refresh the witness's recollection. Finally, in some instances when a witness simply cannot attend trial, the trial judge has the authority to allow the deposition testimony to be read to the jury. If you are a party to a lawsuit and are requested to give deposition testimony, your attorney will likely spend a significant amount of time preparing you for the deposition process to put you at ease and make you feel comfortable. Please remember your call, email, or text to the attorneys is free. All of us at Hollis Wright want to help answer your questions on real issues you face. Remember, a competent lawyer will respond to every question you send in. That's our pledge and promise to you. Thanks for watching the attorneys on WVTM 13. Final segment of the attorneys, less than six minutes remaining. So if you want to talk to attorneys from Hollis right who are standing by, you got about six minutes to take advantage of that opportunity. Josh, let's talk a little bit about bad faith um, and how lawyers can make sure that they do the right things on behalf of the client to set the insurance company up for bad faith if they decide they just want to deny a claim without investigation, for example. Let's talk a little bit about how that process works. Okay, so there's, there's a couple of things. When you deal with a life insurance claim or disability, all these other things that we do, if you deal with an insurance claim and the client comes to you and said they're not paying the full amount they should or the amount I think they should or they've denied my claim, what you do, for example, in a life insurance case is go gather all the records. Go, go pick up the phone and call the, the attorney that has sent you the case, and that would be Josh and his crew, and they probably already gotten the accident report, they've gotten all the details, they may have recreated the scene for us. We can point out all of that in the claim file, okay? It's a willful blindness routine, right? You may think telling somebody over the phone is going to create an evidentiary record. It's not. That's not the way that works. And I got to tell you, that, that initial workup when you're dealing with a potential bad faith claim is crucial because it strips away the debatable reason. All right, so a little legalese here. Basically, the insurance companies try to create a debatable reason to deny your claim, okay? If you take that debatable reason away from them and they have nothing left, then maybe your claim gets paid without going to court. Or when you do get in court, maybe the jury awards you those additional damages because it was done in bad faith. And I, I, really, gotta, I really gotta hand it to you that whenever we get a case sent to us about an employee benefit claim from your firm, we have that resource to immediately reach back out to Hollis Wright. We get massive amounts of documents in. See, the, the thing that you don't see is that when you pick up the phone and call, you get a team working for you to gather your medical records, to get the accident report, to figure out whether or not there's been some sort of recall for that defective product that caused your injury, to look at whether or not if you've got a series of events that led to a trucking accident, what caused that accident? They've got the ability to reach out and gather that information quickly, and when they send us a file for an employee benefit claim related to something like that, we reach back out to them and then we make sure the insurance company can't claim it didn't know. Don't try to do this alone, okay? Picking up the phone and calling somebody like Hollis Wright is crucial. You pick up the phone and you still remain in charge. I really think they've got to understand you are still in charge of your case. 
Yes, you've got some lawyers working on it on a contingency fee. And almost always I get this question, yes, it's worth it. Because if those lawyers do take your case, we see a, an increase in the value of what comes from that settlement or yeah. that verdict, right? Yeah. The truth is that phone call that you're making right now, hopefully, is going to lead to better results, okay? All these people working behind the scenes on your team make a difference for you. And here's the key. You stay in charge of that case, okay? You are in charge. Whether you go to court, whether you sit in a courtroom, you've got to understand, don't be afraid of the court. Don't be afraid of the judges. We gave them power, okay? And the lawyers are your servants. That's the way I know yeah. we both work. Yeah. The people are who we serve, right? So when you get those big cases in, that's when all the work goes into it, and it becomes crucial. Yeah, and you know, ultimately this comes down to bedside manner, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, having a really good bedside manner where you listen to people twice as much as you speak sometimes, uh, and you hear their genuine concerns, and then you, you deal with uh, issues that they've got going on and emotion. There's a lot of emotion in these cases. You mm -hmm. want to have a bedside manner uh, that is appropriate. And that really ultimately is what Tom is getting to, which is making sure there's a comprehensive review of the claim to make sure the person understands that they're still in control of their claim. Uh, those are all part of having a good bedside manner as a law firm. And Tom's group's got it, and I think we've got it too. 30 seconds uh, from the both of you. Uh, just a final charge for the viewers, Tom? Look, the, the folks at Hollis Wright are here to serve the people and they've been doing it for a very long time. That phone call, don't be afraid of making it, okay? It's, it doesn't oblige you to pay them at that point in time. It's an introduction to a group of people who care about people. That's, that's the key mm -hmm. and that's why this show is so important. I was just watching that snippet, and I may actually cut that snippet, and we'll use that. How about that? Uh, no, no, you know, um, look, here's the deal. Um, uh, I think that it is super important for people to recognize you can have the same quality of legal service on the victim and the plaintiff side as you can for corporate America. Mm. And uh, it starts with a phone call. It starts yeah. with having the confidence to make a phone call and recognizing that you can do so at no cost to yourself to at least have something evaluated and get that process rolling. Absolutely. Great job. Thanks for Thank being on. Thank you, all. sir. Always a pleasure. Appreciate Always you guys being with us. Appreciate you being with us as well. Hope you've learned something tonight. I know I have. Thanks so much for the time. We'll see you next time right here on The Attorneys. Thanks for watching The Attorneys, sponsored by Hollis Wright.